Ladies and gents, boys and girls, photography enthusiasts, and people who just accidentally clicked on this video without thinking, welcome to the world premiere of Elliot's Incognito South American Adventure. That's right, folks, we're not talking about your regular tourist snaps here. No, 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 no. no. We're diving into the gritty, the real, the oh-so-natural street photography by the one, the only, Elliot the Sneak Shot Virtuoso. Say hello, Elliot. Now prepare to be dazzled, or at least mildly entertained, as we embark on a visual journey through South America like it's never been seen before, through the unassuming lens of Elliot's trouser pocket. Brilliant, isn't it? It's like Picasso decided to paint with his feet unexpectedly, slightly impractically, but hey, potentially genius. We're talking here about a whole new way to compose and shoot street photos that has the potential to literally knock your socks off. Make sure you stick with this video to the end because I'm going to show you a gallery of Elliot's shots using this brand new technique and you are not going to believe your eyes. You see, Elliot was on a tour of the vibrant South American streets, camera in hand, but oh no, camera gives up the ghost. Too spooky for the rule book, I know, but uh, the camera was deader than a dodo fossil. So how was he going to click his masterpiece without a camera? How to snap without the flap? Well, what do you mean? I, I don't want to disturb the locals or, or worse, get mistaken for a spy, Elliot thought. So. Well, the, the cunning of a cartoon detective and the precision of a toddler eating spaghetti, he crafted the ultimate solution, the old camera by the pocket trick, with the side volume button as the shutter button. Majestic. So what possessed him to come up with that idea? Well, let's ask him. Well, that is a really, really wacky way to take portraits from your pocket. Tell me your thinking. Why did you, why did you come up with that? Well, it started in Argentina when when my camera broke, I did take a small camera with me, uh, and that that died while I was in Argentina. So by the time I got to Bolivia, I got used to the idea of, of not really taking many photos when I was there. And I was going about these streets, and in, in Bolivia, and as we went through to Peru, you get these women wearing this traditional dress. You know, they had the bowler hats from when the English came over. They had the traditional dress and they looked absolutely fantastic. But I found it really difficult to take a photo in a, a respectful way. I didn't okay. want to point a camera straight in their face and, and take a photo. And I also didn't want to be too obvious. So the photo looked natural. I, I wanted a natural looking photo done respectfully. So I knew it needed to be uh, discreet in a way. So I was walking about the markets and in the markets, everybody really sits on the floor next to their products. So everybody was waist height to me. So they're all low. They're all low down, yeah. And so I just had this, I had this idea of, of sort of sneaking a photo and, and on, I, I've use an iPhone. So on your iPhone, you can, you can subtly sort of press the camera. I mean, it, it doesn't look too conspicuous. You take your phone out, it looks like you're checking the time. You just tap the camera icon and then you can use the volume buttons on the side to actually take the picture. You press the volume button, it takes pictures. And so all I'd do is I'd walk by, just have my phone up my waist as if I'm just holding it naturally. And I just click and I click and I click and I take 20 photos of somebody as I was walking past them and one of those photos they'd be looking straight at me naturally sat down and it looked perfect so I just started doing it and sometimes it would be more head height if I you know if I, I'd, I'd you know be looking at maps on my phone and I'd you know I'd, I'd be wondering where I am and I'd be clicking if, if I was standing up and they were more chest height but any sort of way of just naturally looking like you're holding your phone and just taking photos, not looking at all, but if you take 20 photos walking past somebody, one of them at least, they'd be looking at you and they'd be natural and they'd be sitting in that environment and it, I felt like it would be as close to a photojournalistic photo as I could get at that time because they, 
they didn't know they were being photographed. And so they weren't posing, they weren't changing their behavior. It just, it was just the sort of adapting the way that I took photos to suit the environment I was in. It just worked. So, so it's documentary really, isn't it? I mean, well, what it is, is you talked about photojournalism there. It's, it's almost like taking pictures with a very long lens of somebody that doesn't know they're having their picture taken, yeah. but with a wide lens. Exactly. And you're never going to be able to do that in these environments. I knew on an iPhone you can't zoom. It's fine. If you take a photo close up, you get the detail. We, we can and zoom. It's just rubbish. It's just rubbish, yeah. But also, in these markets, even if I had a brilliant camera with a fantastic zoom lens, these markets are close. And there's lots of people walking around. You're never going to get a clean shot. And you're never going to get a natural shot because the moment that you walk in with a DSLR or a big mirrorless camera around your yep. neck and start pointing it around, people are either going to hide or they're going to pose. Exactly. So, you know, I, ju I just started walking past people who I would find interesting and I didn't necessarily look at them, but I knew they would look at me. And they did, didn't they? They all looked at you. And what you've ended up with is portraits where it looks like the person is sitting for the portrait because they're looking right at you. Yeah. And I, I genuinely feel, even if I had willingness in the people, I wouldn't have got as good a portrait. They couldn't have posed the way they posed for me without them knowing. I agree. I agree. And uh, look, Guys, when you, when you see these portraits, I think you'll agree. This is one of the most innovative ways of taking uh, portraits that I've seen in a very, very long time. Thanks for sharing that with us. You're welcome. So what does a photo look like with Elliot's newfound technique? Well, pretty damned impressive, I'd say. In fact, I'd say that what he's actually achieved has allowed him to take portraits up close without anybody really knowing what's going on resulting in the most natural street portraits I've ever seen. Take a look for yourself. Uh, sit back, put your feet up, enjoy these images. Well, there are some astonishing images in this collection. And uh, I've just picked out a few here, but stay till the end of the video because I'll show a full gallery of Elliot's images at the end. But look at this one. Look at the woman asleep at the market stall. Look at the light on the woman walking by. So well observed and so natural. Next, talk about natural. Uh, he's gone straight right the way up. You would never get this close to somebody and get that image, would you? Uh, you know, everybody moving around, not aware of the photography so beautifully beautifully natural in the environment i love this image next up look at these uh lighting here it, you know you've got this guy walking past which i like on the right but the interaction between these women is just as you know astonishing great lighting too wow everything comes together the graffiti the the laughter i, I love it this one I had to put in. This is just observation. But, you know, if you'd have asked the woman to pose in the middle, you'd have never got that picture. I don't know whether she's taking that hat on or, 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 or taking it off. And look at the guy next to her, completely, um, you know, uh, oblivious to the photography. And then, of course, the, the, the big image, the religious image such a strong picture as is this one i love that smile look at that smile on the left but but also what he's honed in on here look at the woman on the right holding her pet lamb which she's crocheted or, or knitted a hat for um and she's carrying him around what a beautiful beautiful image and behind you can see you know that authentic look it's just so natural and okay people will say you know you're not looking through the lens you can't control the lighting it's not true photography but you know it's observation and look he's observed lighting here because the lighting on that face is beautiful beautiful side lighting and so he's observed it and then taken the picture so you know i say yeah he he's created that lighting in a way by seeing it uh same on this look at the textures in those blocks those are, you know, very, very old block work. 
uh, and um, you know I think this might have been Machu Picchu or the bottom of Machu Picchu or something and, and you know the juxtaposition of them there and those rocks is just lovely and the tones absolutely super but my favourite coming up look at that that is a portrait extraordinaire I'm sorry, but look at it. It's absolutely wonderful. The tree they're sitting under there, the four of them, the bowler hats, the looks, they're all looking in different direction. The lighting, the dappled sunlight, the tones. Oh my gosh, this has everything. Brilliant. Well, I'm not entirely sure how he managed this, but it is genius and that's the beauty of it. He has unexpected angles, the mysterious environments. It's like abstract art married a game of tear the composition handbook up and throw it in the bin. And look here, shot after shot with intuitive composition that you'd never find by playing by the rules. <laughs> bye bye rule of thirds. But wait, there's more. Because as we pan across the gallery of pocket level portraits, we witness lighting and composition with real life interwoven in between the pixels and subjects in such a natural way, such a natural setting, as if they didn't even know the photo was being taken. And that's because, well, they didn't know the photo was being taken. And before you all rush to the comments and say, wow, what a revolutionary technique. Elliot is the modern day Ansel Adams, if Ansel Adams were shooting from the hip without looking. Uh, but given these photos, uh, a thorough look, uh, glance, admire the space, the environment, the random elbow that might make its way into every third shot. <laughs> no, 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 I'm jesting. Look, really take a look, look closely at what has actually occurred here. Uh, these images are something else. And if these clandestine masterpieces have tickled your fancy, or you just enjoy supporting creative ways to look like you're fumbling with your zipper in public, well, you know what to do. Smash that like button and give him a pat on the back for these, I mean, they really are inspirational images. Uh, and I, for one, think they deserve it. Okay, I am biased, of course, um, but you've got to admire those photos. I think, just look at them, they speak for themselves and don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well it's free of course um, for more pocket-sized content from Elliot and myself ring that bell too uh, and you'll get notified whenever we next decide to awkwardly crouch walk through a cityscape and finally, don't forget to slip into the comfiest comments section on YouTube down below and whisper us your thoughts. Did Elliot redefine photography composition? It's all down there, folks. Let us know your thoughts. And remember, keep those cameras sneaky and keep those pockets deep. Until next time, keep it low angle. Ah, and just one more thing. If you think Elliot reminds you of someone, well, there's a reason for that. <laughs> Hey, let's have a look at some of those pictures once more. They really do make me proud.